Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of People and Events. I'm your host, Gufan Shaji Ogwanye, and I'm thrilled to have you joining me today. Before we dive in, let's take a sneak peek at what's in stuff for us. We are celebrating International World Culture Day. <laughs> And trust me, it's going to be a vibrant and colorful ride. We'll also be experiencing the rich heritage of the Benin people through a captivating stage play. And witnessing the joy of a 90th birthday celebration. So let's get started with our first story, shall we? Today, we are reminded that our diversity is our greatest strength. And what better way to celebrate that than with a journey through the beauty of Nigerian culture? From the stunning attire of the Yoruba people to the soulful music of the Igbo and the delectable cuisines of the North, Nigeria is a melting pot of cultures that will leave you wanting more. Nigeria is a country with over 250 ethnic groups, each with its unique culture and traditions. We stand as a people with one song, with one voice, we're a nation undivided and poised. We will take a stand and build a land in faith to defend what Today, we celebrate the diversity that makes us strong. To build a people is to reorientate them appropriately in their cultural understanding and appreciation. To kill a people is to take their culture away from them and they will die naturally before you know it. How do you do that? Take a language, take people's language away from them, take their cuisine away from them, take their dress culture away from them, take their spirituality away from them, you have, you, have a, you have a dead body on the floor. And to God be the glory, we have a president today who takes every part of development as very important. To that extent, you know, we have seen that we need to revisit how to inculcate, incorporate, and imbue culture into our policy formulating processes as a country. We are showcasing some of the elements of uh, our culture and the creative economy for economic diversification. And uh, the, the, these, uh, these sectors are sectors that uh, could enhance our economy, develop the economy, and create jobs for our teeming population. Our cultural diversity is 
the strength of Nigeria. And it's also a day we are also creating awareness on the need for cultural dialogue. And as well, to create awareness on the potentials of the Nigerian culture and the creative economy. As we celebrate International World Cultural Day, we remember that culture is not just about tradition, it's about the future. It's about the next generation of Nigerians who will carry on our legacy. People out there, they love our culture so much. So it is time for our parents, our leaders, our statesmen, and every, each and every one of us to come together to tell our children and the young youth coming up more about culture. is the universal language of love and today we feast on the flavors of our diversity savoring the unity that makes us one music and dance are the readings of our soul and today we let them move us to celebrate the beauty of nigerian culture and the strength of our diversity So let's raise our flags high and our voices loud, celebrating the one Nigeria that we are, a nation of many cultures, but one people united in our diversity. No matter your state, your tribe, your ethnic groups, wherever you are coming from, just know that we are one. We are, we are unifying power with this name called Nigeria. Happy International World Cultural Day, Nigeria. May our diversity forever be our strength. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji Ugwanyi, NTA News. And speaking of culture, let's take a look at this incredible stage play that showcases the rich heritage of the Benin people. This play is all about the challenges women face, especially when it comes to love. It's a beautiful and thought-provoking performance that will leave you feeling all the emotions. Retelling stories from the past is crucial for understanding our history, learning from past events, and shaping our future. Playwright Uvie Giwewegbe aims to accomplish this with the play When There Was Manila. The play delves into the role of women in the ancient Benin kingdom. Through the life of Uvie, a wealthy widow struggling with the burden of her deceased suitors and a lingering curse. As a wealthy widow with a beauty that captivates the entire town, she finds herself the subject of attention from countless bachelors. However, her heart longs for only one. As the sun kissed you, while I'm away, all the waters caress your skin. You know that I am jealous. Feeling spawned by Evie's rejection of his advances, Osaho devises a plan to win her over. Osaho? Yes. You made me simple. You have brought me a gift of love, and the source of this will be destroyed so that we can put to action all of our plan. This is the reason she could not marry me. Ruth 
rooted within the play is the haunting history of slavery, a dark era when humans were treated as commodities. When there was Manila, it's a gripping story of love, interwoven with greed, betrayal, conspiracy, patriarchy, and slavery. For me, the story was more of uh, telling the tale of women and the idea of patriarchy at that time and the patriarchy that we have to deal with presently. So it's, 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 a, it's a story about things that women have to fight in their environment, things that they have to do to be seen and to achieve what they need to achieve. She was very determined to be herself and that's one thing that I, I really like about her as a character. Sorry, was too desperate and too greedy. When his master was passing away, he wanted everything for himself, but the master did not give him. The master married Evie when he was about to die and gave him. So I think we should not be too greedy over people's properties. My own um, takeaway from this is sometimes just let love lead. If they don't like you, not like you. Just move on with your life. So um, though I was wealthy, I overstepped my boundary and then it cost me a lot more. And the actors were top notch. They actually delivered on what they're supposed to do. I, I want to say it's one very beautiful contribution to the theater uh, industry in Abuja. Our mothers should understand us. This, that's the mistake they keep on making time to time. And second of all, they should allow love flow naturally because it conquers a lot of things. It makes way for peace. And to end it all, evil is not good because see the way he ended, he ended up mad. I'll call it a political love tale, but it also centers around the sense of love against, that's speaking love against the sense of responsibility. The sense that the gods are calling you to the other side. And you want to leave her behind a widow. My daughter is 19, right from marriage and motherhood. As a mother, who would have your heads? All I have will be your daughters. And their daughters and daughters and sons. Uvie Giwewegbe's play aims to uncover the historical status of women and promote women's empowerment. Stories like this play an important role in preserving history and cultural heritage. They remind us of our roots and help us understand the values and beliefs that have shaped our cultures. And now let's take a break. When we come back, we'll be celebrating life at 90 with a remarkable individual who has inspired countless people with his achievements and fatherly disposition. You won't want to miss this. Welcome back, everyone. As the popular adage goes, hard work pays. And that's exactly what we're celebrating with the grandson of Oba Eweka, Prince Alexandra Osayande. This venerable gentleman has earned the respect of many with his remarkable achievements and kind heart. Happy birthday, sir.
90 years of hard work been celebrated as Prince Alexander and his delectable wife of over five decades walk the path of Anna as recipients of the grand celebration witnessed here. It's God. There's nothing. It's God that does everything. Since we got married, no misunderstanding. It was a roll call of the Benin Royals, Socialists and Associates of Children of the Celebrant who came from within and outside the country to surprise their father who spared nothing to make them what they have turned out to be in life. Little wonder, it was the best of any form of celebration as food and choice drinks were in profuse offer. There was a colorful cake cutting ceremony this gesture by friends of the celebrant's first daughter, the manager news and current affairs NTA Oka, Sele Oladipo, attracted the praise and respect from all who came from far and near. For his children, the love showered by their dad will remain inestimable. At 90, you can see how he is. Still very strong. You know, no head challenge, nothing. So I give God all the glory. I wish him to still live longer. Uh, the word of God says 120, and I hope he will make it to 120 by God's grace. Yeah. My dad made me who I am today because he's full of love. And he taught me how to love, not just his cage, so his love expands around him. He's a selfless man who has done so much for so many people. He means a lot uh, to so many people. And we're all proud to gather here to celebrate him. Customary with the NTA family, it was affection shown on the dance floor. Relations of the nonagenarian attributed his achievements to dint of hard work. Guests described the man of the moment as a gentleman per excellence. He's a very peaceful man. He cannot hurt a fly. Since the demise of our parents, he has played the role of a big daddy. My uncle is an epitome of gentility. I cannot wish him more. You know, God has been most merciful you know, to the family. All I wish for my very great dear uncle is uh, many more years in good health. I'm happy that he has reached 90. In fact, he's a wonderful person. We celebrated with him. We have also tapped from him. I will be here 10 years' time. To clock for 90 years is not an easy thing. So we are so happy with him. We as an in-law, we are here to celebrate with him. To the glory of God. I want to thank him for giving NTA an asset, Seleo Sayende, who is a crack reporter. With children in the caliber of Sele, you can tell that Pastor Sayende has indeed done well by raising children who are useful to themselves and also useful to the society. Prince Alexander Sayende worked in the Federal Ministry of Works where he bowed out meritoriously after an unblemished 35 years. He's happily married to his amiable wife, Rosemary. They are blessed with children and several grandchildren. And finally, we're ending today's episode with a celebration of a life well spent in service to God, the church, and humanity at large. Madame Comfort Bology may be gone, but her legacy lives on in the hearts of those who knew her. Rest in peace, Ma. The event kick-started with the line in state of Mama Comfort Bology, where the children elogized her as an epitome of goodness, a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother with the art of gold. In a 
sermon, the clergy described Mama Comfort as one who is steadfast in prayers, godly, and loving to everyone, adding that her steadfastness remained with her until she left the world. The interment was quite emotional, as the children said she would always be remembered as a woman of love, humility and faith while bidding her farewell. She was loving, highly disciplined and she put us on the right path of God. She was a great counsellor, a disciplinarian and as you have seen and heard from people, she was loved by all. Thank God for the opportunity to know her as my mother. When I was in school, I was a teacher before I became a lawyer. At St. Andrews College of York, she would sell her golden her wares, China wares, golden wares, when I was going back to school. So there was nothing I could not do for her. And I thank God I did well with my mother. It means a lot of things about her. I think right now I'm still in self-denial. I, I'm still finding the right words. I mean, it's really difficult for me doing this for Mama, but I know she's, she, she's um, wherever she is, I'm sure she's, she's with the Lord, and um, I just want to say, may she rest in absolute peace. She brought comfort to all that were around her. Everyone would say of her that she was a woman of prayer. She was a house of prayer. Strong, resilient woman. She did many things for all that were around her. You could know her by two, two things, prayer and love. Funeral proceedings done and dusted. Guests were ushered to grand reception, which was agog with dignitaries from across the country who came to identify with the children of the deceased. They said, the occasion is not to mourn the loss of Mama Comfort, but to celebrate her life. Mama was a mother, you know, and a mother to even myself, you know, so and that's why I have to, uh, to be here today to support my big brother, you know, he's an ambassador academy, uh, Bolaji, to support him, uh, to celebrate uh, also the life of Mama. It's a wonderful mother, where everybody pray to live. And we appreciate God for his life. And we thank God for how God is yes, to, uh, to leave a legacy for us. Earlier, there was service of songs at St. Superior Catholic Church where Bible reading, uh, rendition, and prayers were done in honor of the deceased. Today, folks, remember, we have strength in our diversity as Nigerians, and I'm so proud to be part of this vibrant community. Thanks for joining me on this episode of People and Events. I am Gufan Shaji Ugwani. Until next time, stay fabulous and keep celebrating our diversity.